Hey there, this is Amy from the Irresistible You podcast and Irresistible University, where I teach women how to drop the body image issues, gain confidence, and lose the emotional weight to look and feel irresistible at any size. Welcome back to my Plus Size Pregnancy series here on YouTube. You can also listen to this on my podcast as well if you prefer the audio version. So um, today, in today's, today's video, I am going to be talking about something that isn't, um, it's not a plus size specific issue around pregnancy, but it is a time sensitive issue. And that is what it's like to be pregnant right now during a global pandemic. Because um, for those of you that are new, this is my second pregnancy. Um, I had my daughter um, in 2016. She's three, she'll be four this fall and I am pregnant with my second, um, it's a boy. And so my son is also due actually right around the same time as my daughter's birthday, <laughs> which is really funny. So as of the, this recording, I'm 24 weeks pregnant. And yesterday I had to go to my just routine 24 week OB checkup. And I was, you know, pulling out of the driveway to go. And as I was leaving, my daughter and my husband, they were in the garage and they were waving goodbye to me and they had their swimsuits on and they were getting the floats out of the garage because they were going to go to the pool. And as my, um, as my daughter was like waving to me, I started having tears like welling up in my eyes and this like wave of sadness washed over me as they both started waving at me because this is one of many appointments that I have gone to and that I will continue to go to by myself. And, you know, all of that is because of what's going on right now. In my last pregnancy, my husband, he never missed one appointment. Like he was there, he wanted to be there. He was there at every single appointment. And it was a way of us also bonding with one another, like with the baby, like bonding with the baby, because we would go to the appointments and we had this routine where I don't even know how this happened, <laughs> but it did. So something happened to where after every appointment, it became like this tradition that we would go to the most basic place ever. We would go to Chili's. <laughs> we both liked the food. Um, I love their margaritas. I obviously wasn't drinking margaritas, but um, <laughs> um, we would go there for lunch or like an early dinner, depending on the time of the appointment. And that became like our tradition. And then after those appointments, we would go, cause we would talk about what we like, what they said at the appointment. And we would talk about what she was going to be like. And we would talk about names and we would talk about the nursery and what we were planning and just, you know, all the things, especially as new parents, cause this was, that was our first. And then after lunch, we would go, um, like right across the street is a Burlington and they have a huge baby department and we would go to Burlington or home goods or like any of those kinds of stores. And we would look at baby stuff and we would buy all the cute things. And, you know, it was just a very different time, very, very routine, but it was, you know, when you compare to what's happening now, it's very different. So yesterday, um, you know, when I got to the parking lot and now to go to your appointments, you have to check in. And so you have to text um, the doctor and once everything is all clear, they will give you like an all clear text. And then you go upstairs so that you can go straight in and you don't have to sit in the, the waiting room, which you know what, post COVID, I would appreciate that as well because it's like a huge time saver. <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, I got there and as I was in the parking lot going upstairs, I felt the tears again. Like just, I think everything was starting to hit me on the reality and the severity. Not that I didn't know it before, but it was like everything yesterday, I finally was like feeling all the things I needed to feel. And it was a standard checkup. It was like, you know, the urine test, blood pressure, weight, um, they check the baby's heartbeat on the Doppler, and then you're literally in there less than five minutes with the doctor, the doctor herself. So um, at the appointment, she let me know that next time in four weeks, one month, I will have my glucose test, and we will also have a ton of paperwork to fill out for the hospital. Like, like I was just like, oh my God, this is happening. <laughs> this is real. 
um, we are like actually doing the paperwork in one month and scheduling my C-section in one month. And that is like, I think that hit me also because it was like, holy crap, this is like really getting real, like for real. So um, in our conversation, you know, it came up about how, you know, current policy at the hospital where they deliver, there can only be one visitor you know, there's only one visitor allowed in the operating room anyway, but one visitor period, like nobody can come to the hospital and, and see me, can see the baby. It can literally just be your one support person, which obviously will be my husband, you know? And then as we're talking, it came up all of these, like what if scenarios about, you know, what if I contracted COVID? What if my baby, God forbid, were to test positive? What would happen to him? Uh, what happens if my husband tests positive and he can't even be there with me? So we just kind of chatted about some of these what if scenarios and it was just like, it was a lot. It was a lot. So, you know, I went and made my, my payment, checked out, did the whole thing. Um, and as I was like coming down the stairs, getting out to the parking lot, I could just feel the tears this time. And this time I... I just let myself feel what I needed to feel. I was like, you know what? Your cute makeup's gone, girl. You're going home. It's okay. Um, I just let myself cry it out. And I got to my car and it took me a good five minutes to like, just let myself feel what I needed to feel. And what I needed in that moment was to just release all of that energy from my body. And that comes out in tears. And so I sat there and I just let myself feel probably what I've been needing to feel for a few months now, to be honest with you, because obviously I know the pregnancy is real. Obviously I'm taking it very seriously. I've been very, you know, proactive and a little paranoid as well with COVID and taking care of myself and my family. But I think between, so I'll get to one thing in a second. I think between moving the last couple months, you know, because this thing with our house and selling and buying and all the things has been going on since like late April. It's now the middle of July, almost the end of July. So I think all of that being a distraction. And then there was something, there was, there was something in me that kind of was hanging on to this little tiny shred of hope. And I'm talking about back in March when I found out I was pregnant and when the pandemic was really like, you know, ramping up here in the States. I think there was this, like this little sliver, this little shred of hope in me that thought, well, you know, by the summer, especially by the fall, things are going to be back to normal. Things are going to be okay again. But a bigger part of me has always known because I believe in science and I believe in facts. And, <laughs> um, there's a bigger part of me that kind of knew there's no way in hell this is going away by the summer. And if it's going to get worse in the second wave, there's no way in hell it's going to be better by the time you deliver. So a part of me has always kind of just known that this would be the rest of 2020, but I had this sliver of hope that, you know, maybe by the middle of my pregnancy or towards the end, you know, Frank, my husband and my daughter can start coming with me and things will be different. And, um, you know, it, that's just not the case. So I think yesterday, the severity of what being pregnant during a global pandemic means, like really, really hit me. It really hit me because while I had that sliver of hope, along with the distraction of moving and buying and selling the house, you know, things are starting to settle down. We like, things are getting real. Let me just say things are getting really real. Like his dresser arrived a couple days ago. We just ordered his crib. Like things are becoming a reality, right? And it's also becoming a reality of, this is a very serious situation. And also, I mean, I already knew that, but it's like, you know how sometimes things just really hit you like that. And so, um, you know, it, it just kind of, I let myself feel what I needed to feel because this entire pregnancy has been different because of COVID. The rest of this pregnancy and this birth, and even that, you know, they call it the fourth trimester postpartum, is going to be different. And it just makes me feel really sad because I know that things are not getting better. 
if anything, we are in the potential right now, a higher potential for things to only get worse. And while I was feeling sad, just thinking about how all the things that I and my family are missing out on during this pregnancy, I then felt like this overwhelming amount of guilt because I thought, what is your problem? And I think this is another reason why I had not allowed myself to feel these things because I thought, oh my God, like you're so lucky, like you're so blessed. You're so blessed. You're not lucky, you're blessed. You have a perfectly healthy child. All of your tests come back normal. You are in perfect health. All of your vitals are like literally picture, like textbook where they need to be. Let's not talk about the weight gain. We talked about that last week. <laughs> um, but it's not affecting me. It's not affecting my child. It's not affecting my health. You know, all of my vitals are there. No, thank you, God. Like I am having a very, like, just very normal, healthy pregnancy. And I thought, what the hell do you possibly have to complain about? Like you have literally nothing to be sad about in this situation. And then I was like, hold on, <laughs> hold on a second. Let's, let's just stop and pause. Okay. And I'm gonna drink. You know, I thought about what I always tell my coaching clients all the time is I always tell them like, you, you have to feel what you feel. Okay. You have to let yourself feel what you're feeling and not add on the additional helping of guilt and shame about why you're feeling it. Because it's one thing to feel what you're feeling, but then you make it worse when you tack on guilt and shame. Well, I shouldn't be sad because I have all these things. I shouldn't be upset because I have blah, blah, blah. And that guilt and shame that you're adding on is just making the situation feel even crappier. And so you just have to sit in your feelings and let yourself feel them because pushing them down or deflecting or distracting, they're going to eventually catch up to you, right? So, you know, here's the thing. I can be grateful to have a healthy pregnancy, to have a healthy baby, and I can still feel sad about what we're missing. I can still feel sad about the things that are different this time around, right? I have that right to feel that way. I can be excited about meeting my son and bringing him into the world, but I can also feel terrified to be bringing another human being into the world right now in the state that it's in with this pandemic. It's terror. It's absolutely terrifying to know I will have this helpless little infant in this crazy world that we're having, but I'm also so excited to meet him. Right. Um, I can plan his nursery. I can buy all his things and feel excited about that planning process, but I can also feel deep, extreme anxiety around all the unknowns and all the uncertainty right now right? So you don't have to pick one or the other. You get to feel all of those things. And being pregnant during a pandemic, it's terrifying. And we need to just sit in that and we need to honor that. And we need to recognize that it's scary AF, okay? Um, because there's a million things that could happen. And you don't need to ever feel bad about the feelings that you have. You don't need to compare your feelings or your suffering with somebody else. And I think a lot of us are doing that during this time because we see people, you know, getting the virus and getting very sick and being hospitalized and we see people passing away and we think, well, thank God that's not me. And we think, well, you know, if that's not happening to me, what do I have to complain about? Right. But here's the, here's the rub, right? Everybody right now, no matter who you are, is mourning something during this pandemic, right? For me personally, at the moment, I am mourning the same type of pregnancy I had with my daughter. The pregnancy, and I hope I don't start tearing up. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, the pregnancy that included my husband being by my side 
physically at every single appointment, holding my hand at every single ultrasound. Our ultrasounds are on Zoom and that is not the same. <laughs> you know, I, I um, envisioned how it would be with my second that my daughter would get to join that experience and would, you know, get to see the baby in the ultrasound and that's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen the rest of these four months, three, four months that I have left. Um, I, I cried thinking about my daughter not being able to hold her brother in the hospital. Like she won't be able to sit on the bed next to me and, and hold him and see him for the first time. Neither will my parents or my family, right? Nobody's gonna get that experience. No friends, no family will be able to come to the hospital and you know, meet him for the first time. And that just, it's, it's a new, I'm actually so sick of the phrase new normal, <laughs> but it is, it's the new normal right now where this is just the way babies are being born into the world, right? Um, and it's all because we need, and, and I understand it and I respect it. I respect that we need to be, um, you know, I want to lessen the amount of people he's in contact with, but that doesn't mean, and this goes back to, I can feel both. I can respect the science of wanting to keep him safe and wanting to keep other people safe while also being angry and sad that we have to miss out on this, right? Um, you know, I don't even know how that's gonna work <laughs> when we come home from the hospital. You know, having friends or family at the house as visitors just the thought of that, like I want it, but it gives me extreme anxiety because I don't know how that's going to work with the newborn and, you know, they don't have an immune system at that point. So, you know, having anxiety to be around your own family, your parents, your friends, that's not normal. And that's something we're all missing, right? We're missing that sense of normalcy because it's not normal to have anxiety around your parents coming over. You know, when we took our daughter home from the hospital, I was at lunch and Home Depot like the next day <laughs> with her and we would take her everywhere. I would get out of the house. I would go do things and I'm very hesitant to do all of that this time around, right? Being out and about, I feel like is honestly what kept my postpartum depression at bay. It's what kept me feeling good about myself as a new mom and, you know, I mentally cannot be locked up at home with a newborn and a three-year-old and not be able to go places. Like, that's just like, I, I don't know how I'm going to handle that. And so that's another like, you know, thing right now that's, that's really getting to me. And, you know, the other thing too, is we have an entire other family that's in Texas. And, you know, when my daughter was two months old, right around Christmas time, it was a day after Christmas, we drove from Virginia to Texas so they could meet her. And this time around, no, like there's literally no way that we're gonna go on a road trip in 2020 with a global pandemic, especially to Houston where they are in crisis mode right now. So that just makes me so sad because I have no idea when they're gonna be able to see him, when they're gonna be able to meet him. And I worry also about keeping myself, my family, my parents, keeping everyone as healthy as possible, especially between now and the due date, because that could make everything change. And I can't even imagine being alone in the operating room by myself without my husband there. And I won't even go there to think about what could possibly happen if my daughter or my son gets sick it's just too much, you guys. It's too much. It's too much to, to handle. It's too much to think about. It's heavy. Um, it's overwhelming. And I think we need to all give ourselves more credit about the way that we're feeling because we are not in normal times. We are not in a new normal. We are not in anything normal at the moment. All of this is brand new and all of this is scary. And there's no sense of hope at the moment that this is going to get better. There's no sense of certainty about when this will stop. And, you know, as humans, we are wired for certainty. We want certainty in our lives. And right now we don't have it. And that's very scary. So are all of those things, you know, the end of the world? Obviously not. Obviously there's always someone that has it worse, but nonetheless, it's all still very serious. It's all still very serious. And, 
even if you're not losing a loved one during the pandemic, you still have the right to be sad. You have the right to be upset. You have the right to mourn because all of us, even if we haven't lost someone, we've lost something. And that something can be time, normalcy, certainty, peace of mind, human connection, hugging, empathy. Like there's so many different things um, sanity, <laughs> right? There's so many things that we have all lost and we don't know when we're getting it back. And so, you know, because I am pregnant, I have to be very careful about my energy and my stress and my depression and my anxiety. And I am constantly trying to keep those things in check, which is why it is important to feel what you feel in the moment and not push it down for later. So for right now, all I can do is focus on gratitude for my health, for my baby, for my family, for everything, and let myself feel what I need to feel when I need to feel it. And I hope that, you know, if you're going through this too, you're able to do the same. And, you know, even if you're not pregnant during a pandemic, these feelings are still very real because you've still lost something, right? So I hope this was helpful. Um, Again, you can always listen in and tune into my podcast. Just search Irresistible You on your favorite podcast player. You can also follow me on Instagram at Irresistible Icing, where I show all my behind the scenes, my day-to-day -day stuff. And I will catch you in the next one. Until then, stay irresistible. Bye, guys.